Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today we see the VI characteristics of a PN junction diode. Alright, VI characteristics which are the volt ampere characteristics. Volt ampere and in short we always write it as VI and characteristics has a long spelling. Characteristics of diode all right now the equation of the current of the diode is given by id is equal to is exponential of vd over eta vt and this whole minus one let me confirm it Vd over eta Vt, yes. Now you know what these things are. Is is the reverse saturation current, Vd is the applied potential, eta is the ideality factor and Vt is the temperature uh, constant or whatever it is. We've seen that in the previous videos, right? Its value is 26 millivolt or something like that. So, now what do we have? We, uh, characteristics, the graph. So we want to draw the graph of of what of the voltage versus current or current versus voltage so this is the current and this is the voltage across a diode right now so the first if we see for 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 a no bias state so we start three we saw three states so the first let's say when vd is equal to zero volts vd is equal to zero this equation suggests what you put a zero over here so this would exponential of zero would be one one minus one would be zero so i s into zero would be zero which would result in i d equaling zero so this would be the point i d is equal to zero all right now for the forward bias condition so let me write it in the shortcut as f B C forward bias condition what happens is that V D is greater than zero. So a positive V D would suggest what? It would suggest an increase in temperature. But when? Till when? So we are increasing voltage, but the current is still zero. Till Till what? We have seen till the barrier potential is achieved. Till Vb equals Vd. And when this happens, we have a flood of electrons passing. We have a flood of electrons passing. Alright. And you remember that in the forward bias condition, the P is with the plus sign. Let me draw it. So the P is... To the positive terminal and the n is to the negative terminal of the battery so when vb becomes equal to vd the flood of electrons passes where vb if i take an example vb is equal to 0 0.3 this is for germanium atom so if this is 0 0.3 all right 0 0.3 so the current has to be zero till this point because the the the, the majority charge carriers are facing a barrier to overcome once that barrier is overcome then they can flow all right so initially they are at a zero state right but as we increase so so some of them may pass some some of the minority charge carriers may pass we have a small value of current and once 0 0.3 is reached we have an exponential rise so this is the graph and I believe I made it a little long, a little wrong because it is at 0 0.3. So this is 0 0.3 over here. We shall have this exponential rise. All right. So at 0 0.3, we have the exponential rise. Similarly, if you talk about the germanium, uh, the, this is for germanium. For, for the silicon atom, Vb is equal to 0 0.7. So, so again, if this is 0 0.7, let's say, 
So the current is initially 0, 0. Some of them may pass, some, some of the material may pass, resulting in a, in a smaller amount of current. And once this barrier potential has been reached, we have an exponential increase of current. Is that fine? Similarly, we have Vb equal to 1.2 for the other commonly used semiconductor that is gallium arsenide. So if this is 1.2, again we have the same case, we have a current of 0, a small amount of carriers may pass by increasing the potential and then when this barrier potential is reached, we have an exponential rise. And how is this? So we have seen this, all right. As we increase Vd, Vd is increased, so the width of the depletion region would decrease, and this would suggest for the barrier potential to decrease. Is that fine till here? This is under the forward bias condition. Now what happens for the reverse bias state? <laughs> reverse bias condition. So in reverse bias condition, the P is connected to the negative terminal and the N is connected to the positive terminal. Now what happens? Which means a VD of a negative magnitude is applied. Isn't it so? Alright. Now what happens? We saw in the reverse by state that only a small amount of current that is due to the minority charge carriers. I of minority charge carriers only flows. Alright, and the current due to majority charge carriers is equal to zero approximately. Why? Because by increasing the negative Vd potential in the reverse bias condition, the width of depletion region increases and now by increasing the width, the barrier potential increases and now the carriers cannot cross so the current is zero. The only current that exists is due to the minority charge carriers which is the leakage current or the drift current or the reverse saturation current which is in a very small amount. So if we have for germanium, so germanium well has a, some magnitude of this reverse saturation current, right? So if this is the graph for germanium, so it only had this quite a little value of reverse saturation current. Or did I draw it uh, wrong? Yes, it is like this. Yes, it's fine. So this is for germanium. Now what happens after increasing this reverse bias potential to a certain point, what happens we have a breakdown region and we have a sudden rise in the current in the reverse state. Alright, this is for the germanium. Similarly, we have for this silicon, what do we have? We have the reverse saturation current. Let's say this is the magnitude of the reverse saturation current. So it's flowing and, and what happens, at, at you increase the potential to some level, you have a breakdown. So what is this breakdown I'm telling you, right? All right. And similarly, you have it for a germanium, for this gallium arsenide. So you have the least value of this leakage current for germanium arsenide and this is it. Now if I write in the proper scale, if a proper scale is mentioned, so this is in the region of microamperes, this above the axis in the region is of milliamperes, this is in volts, uh, not in volts, in tenths of volts. Yeah, words, yes. All right. Now what happens? So, so we, we talked about the breakdown region. Breakdown. So what is this breakdown, right? So have a look. We are increasing this reverse potential. We are increasing this reverse potential, increasing, increasing. A certain value of potential is reached. This is called the breakdown voltage breakdown voltage represented by a V 
and a subscript B V. So so this is a big breakdown voltage for this silica germanium. The red color is for so this is it right? This is for uh, silicon and the green color. This region this is the breakdown region for gallium arsenide. So you increase you increase you increase what happens is that they that that the carriers are uh, getting energy right the electrons are getting energy what happens they in, they get a sufficient amount of energy equal to their ionization potential and they are ionized so they become free for conduction right now they have more and more energy coming because you're increasing the potential right so what do you, what they do one electron let's say is free it collides with another so a total of free electrons are two now these two free electrons collide with other two electrons the total free electrons are four these four will collide with other four to make eight free electrons and similarly this goes and goes on like a chain reaction so what happens is that we have a large number of free electrons and we have a sudden and a large amount of current flowing in the reverse region this is called the breakdown region the book has named it the a term avalanche current avalanche means a rapid increase of current this region this region in the reverse bias state that you increase the potential and the maximum potential this at uh, the potential at which the breakdown occurs this is the breakdown voltage or breakdown potential at which this region is achieved now this region this is called as the breakdown region breakdown region or it is also called as Zener region so we have a diode called Zener diode which we will be studying in detail so let it go now this region or okay, this region is called as the breakdown region or the uh, Zener region we have another term that is the peak inverse voltage peak inverse voltage or we also call it peak inverse rating all right so, so let me write it down as piv rating now what is this peak inverse voltage so so this is the maximum voltage the maximum reverse bias voltage all right reverse bias voltage a diode can withstand before breakdown all right now so have a look over here if this vbv is the breakdown voltage so just before just before the breakdown voltage this was the maximum voltage that this diode could withstand and this what happens is uh, that, that that so so after increasing by that pre that voltage was called the peak inverse voltage after increasing above the peak inverse voltage the breakdown occurs all right so peak inverse voltage is the maximum reverse bias voltage that diode can withstand before breakdown so have a look now we have the graphs for gallium arsenide we have for germanium we have for silicon so the preferable is what what do you think is preferable so while well, this gallium arsenide is preferred because of what because of a higher breakdown voltage and why is it so because it's can then a higher potent withstand a higher reverse bias potential so let me read out some points from the book all right so what do we have is as noted in the curve the center of the knee this was the knee this knee they call it a knee this barrier potential uh, for 0.3 volts for germanium 0.7 for silicon and 1.2 for gallium arsenide for gallium arsenide the reverse saturation current is typically about 1 pico amperes for gallium arsenide we have this value is a 1 pico ampere right the reverse saturation current this is a 1 pico ampere and we have other values as well all right uh, we compare to 10 pico ampere for silicon so 10 pico amperes for silicon this value is a 10 pico amperes and 1 micro ampere for germanium 
वन माइक्रो एम्पेयर फॉर जर्मेनियम ऑल राइट सिग्निफिकेंट डिफरेंस इन लेवल्स ऑल्सो नोट दैट द रिलेटिव मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ द रिवर्स ब्रेक डाउन वोल्टेज फॉर ईच मटीरियल गेलियम आर्सेनाइट टिपिकली हैज द मैक्सिमम ब्रेक डाउन where breakdown level that exceed those of the silicon devices of the same power level by about 10% with both having breakdown voltages that typically ex extend between 50 volts and 1 kilowatts there are silicon power device diodes which br with breakdown voltages as high as 20 kilowatts germanium typically has breakdown voltage of less than 100 volt all right typically less than 100 volt with maximum around 400 volts germanium uh, all right the curves are simply designed to reflect relative breakdown voltages of our three materials when one consider the level of reverse saturation current and breakdown voltage if you consider the breakdown voltage and the reverse saturation current germanium certainly has the least desirable characteristics all right now what happens is that a factor we don't have over here is the operating speed of each material so uh, that is an important factor in today's market for each material the electron mobility factor is provided electron mobility factor so i will write it down over here electron mobility factor for germanium we have uh, is 3900 for germanium it is 3900 for silicon it is 1500 for gallium arsenide it is 8500 all right the electron mobility factor is provided it provides an indication of how fast the carriers can move in these materials this is a typical rate now we are not going into the detail of this mobility factor but just you Um, um, just to as you uh, understand it like this that the higher the mobility factor the higher the electrons are moving uh, in this material so uh, germanium uh, arsenide gallium arsenide stands out with the mobility factor more than 5 times that of a silicon and twice that of a germanium this results in gallium arsenide and germanium are often used in high speed applications however through proper design careful control of doping levels and so on silicon is also found in systems operating in a gigahertz range all right so that's all about this lecture the next topic that we have is temperature effects which we see in the next video so gallium arsenide and germanium have what high speed applications they are used in high speed applications i write over here very high speed all right because silicon is used uh in the gigahertz range and giga is 10 to the power 12 i believe yes so that's all about today that's all about the vi characteristics of the diode see you in the next lecture with the effect of temperature on the vi characteristics till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you goodbye